Hey guys, Frank, your virtual general aviation aviator here, and today I am in the the Beaver, the the Thron, the the D H the D H C dash two, the De Havilland Beaver by Thronda, and. This should be a relatively quick video. I'm actually just going to do a few touch and goes at uh, Lake Ridge uh, in 8 NC8 in North Carolina. Um, I was flying this um, aircraft in another video and I did a go around and uh, fell behind the power curve on the go around and, uh, and had a bad day. So, and to be honest with you, um, all of a sudden, since I hadn't been flying it recently, then when I do fly it, I tend to ground loop the thing. So, I am planning to try to solve that problem today. So, let's uh, get started here. Let's get this guy started up. Uh, yes, yeah, so just gonna do some touch and goes um, and a couple four stops, um, uh, maybe even more four stops than touch and go. All right, so let's get started here. All right, let's get the let's get the fuel valve open. I'm gonna start on the front tank. In fact, I meant to do this before we started, but let me just check my weight here let me add myself as the pilot i'll be the only one on board i don't need uh fuel in the belly tanks uh so i actually want to turn that belly tank off uh and and i actually don't need fuel in the wing tips so um so let's get rid of this fuel here and we just keep fuel in the front um, I guess we'll keep the belly tanks on, just empty them. All right, and I think we're good. To, oh, yeah, let me just check my tires, make sure I got the big Tundra tires, and I do, and put my mud flaps on. Um, bubble windows don't need skis, and I do need the old style throttle quadrant. That's my preference. Okay, all right. And let's, um, so I got the fuel gauge open. Let's, um, let's get it uh, primed. Do this about six times. One, two, three, four, five, and last. All right. And let's um, do a mixture four. And we leave our prop feathered. Just barely crack that throttle. Um, this big radio engine, it's not a good idea to, to rev it up on startup and wobble up some fuel pressure. Okay. And Let's clear this prop. Make sure ain't nobody around. Clear prop. All right. And let's let's get our mags hot. Mags are hot. And I don't know why I tend to. Uh, to forget to turn the master on on this aircraft almost every time. All right. Master. So that should tell you that uh, I'm not paying attention to the gauges before I, before I try to start it up. All right. So let's uh, just go over here and maybe I should try and make it a habit to look to make sure that I've got some um, some power here, but I don't see any voltage. 
on the average. Okay, master is up. Now, I do see my fear gauges come alive. Uh, so, so it's hard to tell other than the light here when I get my master on. Anyway, I digress. All right, prop clear. Let's Okay, RPMs is at 300, 400, want to get it up to about 600. There we go. And let's check out ore. All right, so ore uh, cylinder temp needs to come up roughly to about one this mark here and we want our ore temperature to come up a little bit uh, or uh, uh, actually I think that's ore pressure of uh, that temperature I think that's ore temperature yeah, that's a warm temperature. Oddly enough, just a little trivia about this aircraft. You actually add the ore <laughs> um, here on the inside. <laughs> so you can actually add ore to it uh, from what I understand while, while you are in flight. All right. So I'm running OpenGL as opposed to Vo Vulcan. Um, for some reason, Vulcan is misbehaving. Let's get our alternator turned on. And now I'm seeing this guy come alive a little. I've been saying for years, uh, at least it feels like years, that I'm going to uh, work on getting my view set up in um, X camera. Not done it yet. Okay. So I do see some voltage. Um, looks like I've got uh, about ten, uh, 12 volts, 10 volts. Got, uh, I'm sorry, tw um, about 12 amps and about 48 volts. I'm sorry, that's 30. So about 28 volts, which is what, which is what I should have. Okay. So I'm just rambling, trying to um, wait until my engines warm up. Go ahead and unfeather the prop there and we'll go ahead and taxi out let's get um, let's get our ATOS uh, from RDU so we'll turn on our avionics here and this is our autopilot this is our Com radio and the Garmin is not working but I don't need the Garmin today because I'm only I'm only doing touch and goes but I am gonna flip off the avionics and flip it back on see if the Garmin comes alive is initializing and we'll figure that out later. I did do a Garmin update so I suspect that's um, what's going on but I think the update did work with other aircraft. Anyway, 
Uh, like I said, for touch and goes, we're not going to need it. All right. Um, but I am going to need to set a transponder code. And I think the only transponder I have is the Garmin. So. So I'm going to reload the aircraft and try to get it back to the same state. Be right back. Okay, after reloading the aircraft, we managed to get the Garmin working. Um, not that we need it, mind you, but uh, I just wanted it working. All right, so I think I'm back where we started from. Um, and we did a cold start again. So, still waiting on our solar attempt to come back up. Um, let's see. We got a little high on the RPM. I guess that's okay. I guess we were okay. All right. And beacon light is on. All right, so let's go ahead and turn our taxi light on, which we don't have. So we will turn our landing light on. What we, let's see what what we do have here. There we go. All right. So the beacon is on left and landing. Oh, landing light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting that a little bit confused with the porter, which has a left and right landing light. All right, okay. Pedo heat doesn't need to come on today. It's uh, fairly warm outside. Um, you know, I, it behooves me that I can't find a thermostat uh, on this guy. I don't know if that's uh, if that's me. Uh, maybe I. Maybe there's one in the, um, let's see, there was something sitting up here that I moved. I think that may have been the, um, uh, I forget, I forget what it is, but I, I do, I can tell by looking at my handle that I need to go back and uh, fix some things here. Actually, Didn't mean to hit that. Didn't mean to hit the apply button so quickly because it takes this aircraft uh, good and to apply livery. So I'm probably about halfway done um, while I'm waiting on that livery to apply. Um, then can make sure that I've got um, X pilot set up correctly because I am doing a VATSIM. I did follow VATSIM flight plan, but I rebooted so that flight plan mail went away. Uh, so I, sh I am not going to refile it, but I said that my departure time was going to be 5.20 Zulu and I should make that uh, 5.45. So what I'm doing is I'm taking 1700 and adding 4 um, to get 21.45 that should give me Zulu right and close traffic so I'm just gonna file this one more time unable to submit not connected to the network all right so I did not realize that I was not connected but I guess after disconnecting I do need to reconnect all right and now I can refile this flight plan Okay. And all right, 
So, close traffic, file plan. All right, so now, if we had a control in our area, he would know that I'm planning on doing closed traffic. Okay. All right. So that's done. All right. Now let's go here and get our livery. Uh, 755 Whiskey Elko is our call sign, our tail number. 755 Whiskey Elko. And weight and balance. Put me back in this guy. And. Uh, miscellaneous, put my milk, mud flouts back on, and my throttle quadrant. Uh, I wish this guy would remember those things, but it doesn't. But it doesn't take but a click of the mouse to fix it. Okay, uh, fuel. So front tanks look good. All right. And let's uh, set flaps for takeoff. Make sure everything is free and correct. Free and correct. All right. And let's get out of here. Late Ridge traffic. Beaver 755 Whiskey Elko is taxiing to runway 32 Bay Ridge. Okay, so for CTAF, let me set my reset just to feel elevation. For CTAF, normally what of course what I want to do my oil temp, my cylinder temps are up and everything looks good. Um, for CTAF, what I normally want to do is, is describe the aircraft rather than give a call number because no one on the ground know what my call number is. It's not like I'm talking to, to uh, a air traffic control and they can track me on a radar screen with a tail number. However, the reason I tend to give my tail number, um, even that when I'm doing CTAF traffic, is because I fly so many different aircraft in the sim that I'm trying to get myself trained to automatically remember my tail number. Um, unfortunately, with X-Plane, it doesn't update here when you update it in other places. Um, so I don't have an in-cockpit reference. All right. So there's a little grass taxiway here even in real life. Did you guys see the trees that they are working on for the next generation of X-Plane? Thank God we'll get rid of these two-dimensional trees. Um, they don't look bad from certain angles, but um, the others just look like they're going to be awesome. Um, I don't expect the hardware that I have at the moment to be able to really push X, the, the next generation of X-Plane. Um, they uh, did make it sound like the, the next generation of X-Plane will be able to run on existing hardware, but it's going to really push the limits of new hardware. So um, I am going to wait. Uh, number one, because it's not financially feasible for me to buy new hardware at the moment. Number two is by the time X-Plane next gen comes out, there may be 
uh, may be a horse of a whole different story in terms of uh, hardware. Um, the, the CPUs may be uh, more powerful, may be cheaper, uh, and the graphics cards, um, by the time next gen come out, the 3090 may be old school and maybe something new on the horizon that's um, that can really push it. Late Ridge traffic, uh, Beaver 755 Whiskey Elko is taking runway 32, um, closed traffic, Late Ridge. I didn't really clear to make sure nothing was coming. Shame on me. It looked like I may have overshot the runway just a tad. And it looked like my auto gen is different from what it should be. Okay, anyway, we can make this work in any case, in any case. Okay, so flaps are in. Mixture and props are set. Power set. Let's do a short field takeoff. Go to right then ground effect. And lift off. Rudder here. Flaps come coming out. Flaps out. Hey, Ridge traffic. Beaver is. Turning crosswind, they rich. Uh, should I give my call number? Or should I describe the aircraft? I decided to stick with giving the call number. Late Ridge traffic, Beaver 755 Whiskey Elko is turning downwind, Late Ridge, for runway 32 left, Late Ridge. That didn't quite make sense. I realized I was leaving out some key information and I am way above my pattern altitude, which is 1300 for Lake Ridge. All right, so I'm at pattern now. So there is traffic out there on the horizon. I'm gonna turn the labels off. What's neat about, um, that I notice about Traffic Global is they have introduced gradients. So traffic that's really far out is more translucent, the labels are, and traffic that's closer to you is not so translucent. Okay, so I am past the runway, so let's uh, throw in some carb heat. And let's power back to 17. And let's lose that altitude. Late Ridge traffic, Beaver 75. Five Whiskey Elko is turning left base runway three two touch and go Lake Ridge. Okay, so give folks an idea of what I got in mind, and let's find that runway. I 
believe it's there. Yep, that's it. Okay. And I don't need to do a kamikaze dive. Bleed out some of the speed. Put in some flaps. Late Ridge traffic. Beaver 755 Whiskey Echo is on final runway 32. Touch and go. Late Ridge. All right, so we'll make this first one a touch and go. And I am really not feeling this. All right, get that carb heat back in just in case, I, since I intended, just in case. All right, more flaps, more flaps, power out, put that power out. And I'm actually too fast. All right, take off. Flap set to take off. Speed up. touch and go. Late Ridge traffic, Beaver 755, Whiskey Elko is turning left, crosswind, Late Ridge. Okay, let's make sure I'm good and perpendicular to that runway. Don't see it. Oh man, I'm on downwind. Lake Ridge traffic. Beaver 755 with scale code is on downwind. Runway 32. Lake Ridge. Okay. Flaps out for right now. configuration 20 and 30 Get it trimmed trim that nose down all right uh, let's transition to landing configuration so we want to go car peep, power back, keep that nose up, throw in some flaps, there is traffic, Beaver 755 Whiskey Elko is turning uh, base, right, left base, Runway 32 Lake Ridge. Okay, watch that speed. All right, so that's about what we want. Watch that descent rate though. Uh, try and keep it around 500 feet a minute. And let's find that runway. All right. Pull that power out a little bit. fast. Lake Ridge traffic, Beaver 755, Whiskey Elko is turning final runway 32, uh, four stop. 
Great Ridge. Okay, so I feel like I'm a little low, but I'm 500 feet above the runway. But I am out, so put in another flaps. And, and technically, on this aircraft, um, even though I'm hitting the flap button, I would be actually pumping those pumping hydraulic fluids manually to the to the flaps. So I'm on short final now. Just over the tree line. Get in flaps to the landing. Pull that power out. Car peak up. Track that middle. Brakes and rudder. Try not to ground loop. And I am not going to go to the end to the uh, ramp since I don't have to. In real life, there's a ditch here, so I wouldn't be able to cross to to get off the runway here. I would have to go down to the um, to the building. Lake Ridge traffic, Beaver 755, Whiskey Alco is clear the runway, Lake Ridge. All right, so that's a touch and go and a full stop. All right, so let's, let's try another full stop here. come at you fast on landing and my biggest corporate is trying to remember to manage that carb heat all right so I'm not going to go up to that last barrel because I think if I do then I actually run out of grass strip actually I see some See some barrels up here that should indicate the beginning of the runway. Got this big radio engine in front of me. All right, so let's uh, make sure we stay on the taxiway. place it's not like that in real real life okay all right so get lined up here and of course this is a 3200 foot runway but we want to use all the available runway let's get let's finish cleaning up here Instrument check. Okay, and never once did you hear me go through a glumps check on any of those landings. Okay, um, landing lights are on. All right, let's power up. Flaps are set for takeoff. And back on that yoke because do a soft feel takeoff all right 
and then keep it in ground effect. Oh, I'm way out of ground effect at this point. I'm actually flying. I think um, my trims were well we're not set all right so let's get these flaps out gonna keep our landing lights on late red traffic beaver 755 whiskey airco is turning left crosswind runway 32 late ridge Watch that speed. All right. So let's transition to cruise. Late rear traffic. Beaver 755 Whiskey Elko is turning downwind runway 32, Lake Ridge. All right. Downwind should be. 14 on the um, on the Dow, but I can actually look out the window so I don't have the to look for that 14. to adjust our um, our compass. All right, so glumps, gas, lights. Mixture of props under and undercarriage is already good. And car peak, we're too high. Power back here. And try to maintain a decent descent. Lake Ridge traffic. Beaver 755 Whiskey Elko is turning left base runway 32 Lake Ridge. And you know, I should be on 1228. Let me make sure that I. Get one two two eight in now. One two two eight. Yeah, Late Ridge traffic. Beaver seven five five whiskey echo is turning final runway three two Late Ridge. Okay. And this is gonna be a go around because I completely overshot the runway trying to manage stuff that that um, that should have been managed late red traffic beaver 755 whiskey elko going around late ridge bit of flaps get that power manifold pressure back up to to 33 so we can get a climb all right 100 to go let's transition to cruise 30 on the manifold pressure, 20 on the RPMs. A 
back pressure to maintain that climb. Lake Ridge traffic, Beaver 755 Whiskey Elko is turning left crosswind runway 32, Lake Ridge. Okay. So since I can't see the airport because I can't glance over there, then I'm trying late ridge traffic. Beaver 755 Whiskey Elko is turning downwind runway 32 Late Ridge. Um, and I'm way too high. Almost four or five hundred feet too high. All right, so I don't want to pull too much power out without my carb heat. I don't want to ice up. So let me add a little, add a little manifold pressure to keep me from icing and trim that nose down. Okay, let's go ahead and apply this carb heat. Uh, come on, baby. Uh, maybe it was already in. Um, that might have been why, why it felt sluggish taking off. Okay. Lake Ridge traffic, Beaver 755, Whiskey Echo is turning left base, runway 32, babe. Uh, Lake Ridge. All right, so let's turn this power off, out, put in a few more flaps. There's my bridge, there's my pond, or my boat ramp, or whatever that is. Looking for my airport. Okay, there's my airport. Okay, got me a nice descent, but I'm way too high, so I'm gonna pull a bunch of power out here. Add some flaps. And that's getting me out of my speed. I wanna get down till about 60. Landing. All right, still want to get down a little bit more, so let me get that nose up, get it trimmed up a little bit. All right, there's my 60. Big heavy aircraft for 60, right? And come over these trees. That was not good. See if I can stop it without ground looping, and I can't seem to do it. Okay, so postmortem. That was a bad landing. Um, let's just look at that one. Um, and the reason I'm looking, um, uh, late red traffic, Beaver 755 Whiskey Echo is clear the runway, late Ridge. Um, the reason I want to look at it is because maybe I can see what I did wrong. I was so wrong. I think I was just too high. Yeah, look at, yeah, I think I was just too high. Let's see what my cockpit say. Um, trying to get down to 60. I got all those flaps in. So 
feels like I'm stable. And then here, looks like I started some sort of drift. Now I don't know, I guess I feel like I didn't fly the airplane in. I just, it just dropped in on that right gear. So, guys, I'm gonna fly back to RDU. It's uh, an 11 minute flight and we'll call it uh, 11 minute, 11 nautical miles that is, uh, okay. Um, Lake Ridge traffic, Beaver 755 Whiskey Echo is taxiing into runway 32, Lake Ridge. All right. Maybe I'm not. Uh, let's see, my, my throttles are not working from my Bravo. And maybe I'm still in replay mode. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, there we go. All right, landing lights still on. Strokes are off. And I never did turn the strokes on. There's my runway in front of me. I do believe, yep. Technically, there's a building here. So, I think there are a couple of things that I really need to work on. And number one is my approach. And number two is my transition to be able to do a better job nailing my landings in the beaver. Because right now I am, I never know when I am gonna make a decent landing. And the other thing that I need to work on um, is remembering that this is a tail dragger. A, a lot of times um, I want to land on those, land this aircraft, I'm, I'm gonna take off from here, as if I'm in a tricycle gear aircraft and, okay. Devil. All right, let's try that again. All right, and brakes, brakes. Okay, and car heat. Let's check that. Make sure that's pulled out. All right. And see, I was supposed to put the car heat back in, but just before, I, sometime before I touched down. Um, all right. Let's see, gas on the front tank look okay. All right, and kind of full pressure is coming up. RPMs are coming up, and we are off. Flaps to take off. Nose up, waiting on 60, rotate.
Lake Ridge traffic. Beaver 755 Whiskey Echo is departing the pattern to the south, Lake Ridge. So that's um, that's probably the main reason why I wanted to to continue climbing, even though I was trying to trim that nose down. All right. So. I do know that RDU is to the south. Generally, if it's not a really hazy day, you can see the airport from this location. Um, generally, you can start making out the tower. Okay, I see the airport now. Um, this is the area you look like it ought to be it. some pappies looking for that tower um, that looked like a hangar there's room see the tower. All right, let me check my height. I only need 1,500. Let's transition to cruise. And look for that tower. Okay, there's the tower right there. Got it. All right, and that's right, I'm on VATSIM, so I am not going to go to the, I am not going to go to, um, to the Charlie. Let's see, let's see if I got a controller. I thought I was on VATSIM. Do it. 360 while I check see if I am on that sim or not um, not I don't use X power enough and, um, let's see there that's what I was looking for um, let's see things have been, that's right I disconnected from the server when I did that instant replay so I can go to RDU without having to um, technically without having to change radios and all that, but but let's go ahead and get the eight us for, for RDU. One, two, three, four, eight. Transfer that in. Raleigh Durham Lang at TL Information Victor. Twenty hundred Zulu weather. Wind one nine zero and six. Visibility more than ten. Sky conditions 5,000 view, 20,000 scattered, 25,000 broken, temperature 28, 2.14, altimeter 3001, arriving runway 14, departing runway 14, advise on initial contact you have Victor. 
All right, so we'll land on two, three. I've never really known RDU to use one, four for landing. All right, and ground. Let's see, hit it westerly. Towers one twenty seven two five. Uh, 127.45 I think uh, let's see uh, I'll tell you what we'll do we we'll go to nearest airports Seven four five. All right, and ground is one twenty seven, um, one twenty one nine, and one twenty one seven. I think. I think uh, I'm gonna use one twenty one seven. All right, so let's flip this guy in. Okay. And how far out are we? We're eight nautical miles out. Raleigh Tower, Beaver 755 Whiskey Alco is eight nautical miles to the north inbound four stop. Base runway two three right Beaver seven five five Whiskey Echo. Okay, right base two three right. So we're going to cross the two three left. Let's see if we can get our eyes on the airport. That's kind of important. There's the airport <laughs> off my nose. So we're going to swing hard here. So that we can enter that right base. And we need to get back down to altitude. To cruise altitude. Poor man's autopilot, aka trim tab. Start his base turn, and I'm, I'm kind of feeling it because I can't see the airport. real life I'd be able to look and pull that wing up and look and see exactly where the airport is at.
right, let's see, where's the airport? Ah, it's the airport in front of me. Okay, so. So runway two three, right? So let's put this head on two three. Beaver 75 Whiskey 755 Whiskey Echo is clear the land. Alright, so they just cleared me the land. Runway 23 right. Alright, so glumps, gas. I want to run out of gas on this landing. Um, lights. Undercarriage, mixture, and prop. There's my runway. Overshot it, but that's okay. I'm far enough out to be a man approach. All right, car heat. Laps that give me much better control and these low speeds. All right, let's get lined up here. Trim. stable approach here a bit fast pull that power out just that trim power out some more just that trim again Sixty-five, good speed. All right, just that trim. to the runway. Track that middle line. And there's my ground loop. And my wreck. So you can see, I'm um, getting my landings right about one third to one quarter of the time. Um, so, and I think the problem is my transition 
anyway, I'm going to end the video here and continue to do some more touching, uh, some more landings. Um, see if I can't get a little better at landing this bird. And so I hope you enjoyed the video and pray for me. <laughs> All right, guys, until next time. Um, I don't want to keep bending the airframe here. Um, and I got to I gotta do a shout out right before I go to, uh, to a fellow simmer, uh, Melvin Leroy. That guy can land anything. Um, I've seen him land these beavers, this beaver. Um, that, he's just good. He can transition to almost any aircraft and land it like a pro. So, so kudos, Melvin Leroy. All right, guys, until next time. Y'all come back now, dear.